<laughs> Sorry, I got the who. <laughs> the who? The who? <laughs> Hello, cinephiles, and welcome to... No, let me try that again. There was no energy there. Hello, cinephiles, and welcome to Silver Screen Sips, a podcast where two idiots talk about movies. And today, we are going to be talking about the movie Live Free or Die Hard. Uh, just a reminder, there are spoilers ahead for movies and TV shows that you may not have seen yet. So just know you've been warned. Uh, how are you doing, Isaiah? I'm doing swell. My feet hurt. Um, Is this I our first time back since the holidays? Yes. Well, Happy Whoa. New Year. Well, an yeah. episode came well, out, but yeah, us. we already wished you guys a Happy New Year, but this is actually the new year now for us. So, yes. whoa. Wild. whoa. We're in 2024, guys. Oh, my God. New year, new me. Uh, New year, same stupidity. <laughs> yeah, I um don't. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I really I was trying to I was like really hoping something would come right off the dome, but nothing, there's nothing up there. Yeah, I <laughs> I think my um I think I actually have an actual New Year's resolution. Okay. I know we talked about this in the last one, but I have a real one. Uh-huh. I want to you're going to laugh at me. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I want to compete in a pickleball tournament. Oh my god, you're so white. <laughs> no, I am it's not a white sport. Golf is a white sport, if anything. Oh, God, you're right. Yeah, this is white wider. Is- I say as Tiger Woods is one of the best golfers of all time. <laughs> no, I've well, met yeah, a right, lot of the, people. What do you call it? But the, um, the stereotypical image of a golfer is a rich white An CEO. An old white dude. Yeah. <laughs> because they have nothing else to do with their time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's mine. I don't know. You want to compete in a pickleball tournament. So like, like yeah, how I want to win money. That's really the reason oh, why. Okay, okay. So this is like how when we've competed in tournaments on Call of Duty. Yeah, except um, there's actual rewards instead of just getting pissed at punching the desk that I play at. Touche. Yeah. This I will at least throw my paddle on the ground and cry. <laughs> you know what? Timothy Chalamet used to play Black Ops 2. Yeah, it makes sense. He's young. He, 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 he apparently had trigger mods on his uh, controller. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I did. I saw an interview with that. You're right. Okay, anyways, let's get on with the actual podcast here. Uh, Let's kick it off with This Week in Hollywood. (laughs) Let's let you stew in it. Yeah. Why don't you start off? Okay. Um, Disney's iconic character, Steamboat Willie, has officially gone into the public domain, meaning we can do whatever the hell you want with him. (laughs) Oh, boy. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Only one day after the announcement, a horror film teaser trailer... That's a, okay. It was posted on YouTube featuring the famous mouse, much like Winnie the Pooh turned horror film. Mickey's Mouse Trap, which the film is being titled, will take a similar stab huh, at the mm. slasher film genre. The trailer is in our Discord, but you can also find it on YouTube. And a similar note, the game studio Nightmare Forge Games also announced the next day, following the release of the character, that they'd, make, they'd be making a horror game revolving around Steamboat Willie titled Infestation 88. You can also find that trailer on YouTube as well as our Discord. I'm going to be totally honest. They both look like shit. <laughs> but that's not, but it's the principle. <laughs> it's the principle of the matter. Yes. Especially they do not oh. look as good as Honey and Blood or whatever oh. that Winnie oh, the Pooh one was. At least that one looked like a bigger production, but this just does not, does not. It looks like a, part of my French, but it looks like a student film. Pardon my French. <laughs> it is going to be a weird time. A wild ride. Well, the relatively new dark comedy, Poor Things, which I need to see, starring Emma Stone, has been in theaters now uh, since early December, and the film has just reached an important milestone in the box office. The film has per- surpassed $10 million at the domestic box office, d- despite showing in only 800 theaters, making it the third best per theater average of the year, 2023, not 2024. Um, Emma Stone's performance in Poor Things is being highly praised, and the film has received stellar reviews with a 93% score on Rotten Tomatoes, um, with the box office receiving a bump after the announcement of his Oscar nominations, which we gotta... Mm. We'll talk about that soon, all the Oscars stuff. When they make their announcements of who's getting nominated. Yeah. Yeah. Will we be watching the Oscars? I don't know. Oscar party. So on to our next 
headline, the color purple and Black Panther actress Carrie Burns has been seriously injured in an alleged hit and run in New York City at 1.30 on 130 a.m. on New Year's Eve. Brennan well, is in stable condition, uh, is currently having surgery. According to her publicist, she was struck by a driver who crashed into an outdoor dining shed at Chirp, a Peruvian restaurant in Midtown Manhattan. The driver then backed up and then ran into another car before officers swarmed. We hope she recovers quickly. That's insane. She must have been drunk. There's no way. Oh, yeah. New Year's Eve, 1.30 in the morning. That man was trashed. Or a woman. Never know. No, we don't know. Most likely a woman. You know how they are with driving. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Listen, I'm a woman. I'm allowed to make that joke. You cannot. Anyways. Uh, so in the past, we've talked about how the famous and talented composer John Williams announced that he was going to retire after his last film, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. However... It seems that Williams isn't entirely out of the game just yet. In an interview with the Times newspaper, the composer stated, quote, if a film came along that I was greatly interested in with a schedule that I could cope with, then I wouldn't want to rule anything out. Everything is possible. All is before us. Only our limitations are holding us back. Or okay. to put it more simply, I like to keep an open mind. John Williams, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Getting so philosophical on us simply put um pay him a good paycheck and he'll do it <laughs> yeah stop fucking up every movie disney and he'll do it anyways anyways after a dis another disappointment uh, after a disappointing opening weekend the animated film by illumination called migration has passed a major box office milestone indicating a potential comeback the film surpassed 100 million dollars at the global box office which is a 40 percent increase from its opening weekend this can Whoa. give the film some hope which is exactly what they need given the film came out during the holidays along with other successful films and that has affected the migration's ratings i've seen and it everywhere i have the i think the everybody was very was not they didn't have high hopes when yeah. the trailer when the first trailer for the movie was like two minutes long and 90 percent of it was uh scenes from other illumination movies <laughs> mm. Like 10% of the trailer was from Migration and nobody knew anything about it because 90% yeah. of the trailer was literally just Minions, Despicable Me, and other Illumination properties. And they're like, they, to be honest, when I first thought it, I thought it was like an Illumination ad. And then they said, mm. oh, Migration. I was like, oh, it's a new movie. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was very confused. And I think so was everybody else. <laughs> uh, Yeah, that was one of them. Now, the popular horror survival game Dead by Daylight has been greenlit from Bloomhouse to create a movie based off the game. Great. <laughs> the adaptation was announced back in <laughs> your enthusiasm. <laughs> the adaptation was announced back in March of 2023, but we hadn't heard much else since then until now. Uh, Blumhouse Vice President Ryan Turek, I think is how you say it, Turek. offered a hopeful Turek. Turek. Okay. Offered Turek. a hopeful update. Correct, correct. You're, you're correct. Thank you. Offered a hopeful update for the movie stating, quote, I will say that one of the projects that I'm active on is Dead by Daylight, which is the video game adaptation of a game that's been around for like seven years. I look at that as a celebration of horror that the video game itself is. What we learned from Five Nights at Freddy's is obviously stare towards the fans and make a video game adaptation for the fans, end quote. Wow. Which, it took them how many years to figure that <laughs> out? <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. Paramount is making a second season of a TV show for Halo that nobody wanted because they mm -hmm. butchered it so badly. Mm -hmm. Take also, a look by at, the way, I love how they say like what we've learned from Five Nights at Freddy's. It's like, dude, what about The Last of Us? Like one of the most highly rated and best video game adaptations of like all time. Yeah, sure. Yes, but no, no, like, we'll no. Five, Nights, Five Nights, at Nights at Freddy's that sucked ass. Yeah, because they made money. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think that with. Dead by Daylight needs to do now is obviously make a Steamboat Willie character that's going to hunt you down in Dead by Daylight. Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> that's a great idea. Pay me. We're patenting, patenting <laughs> that. You cannot take that from us. You have to pay us for that idea. Dead by Daylight. Actually, actually they don't. It's public domain. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> okay, well, I take it back. Maybe we can work something out, though. So. Anyways, that concludes this week in Hollywood. You can find all of our sources cited on our Discord channel, along with any trailers or um, other news-related things that we discuss in the in the episode. Yeehaw! 
meaning infestation 88 is in our discord if you want to go see it and the and the uh what was it mickey mouse's trap mickey mouse trap mickey, the mickey mouse that's trap like, the house that's like the, the parent whole, trap that's like the <laughs> lamest title too like you couldn't mickey's have Ma- mickey's mouse trap yeah we call it meh doesn't have a good ring blood and honey now that's a ring that was that was a that was a genius that was a genius yeah thing. it's like ooh sweet and sour okay okay anyways isaiah uh, anywho what do we got next what's what are we doing here well with all this terrible news we need mm. a drink so it's time for big lose big bruise woo it's woo. time to get drunk <laughs> okay so let's see what he's given let's see what he's given us today hmm? yeah what do we got now for the live for your die hard okay. he's given us the firewall fizz cocktail Ooh, I like I'm the liking theme. it already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. This comes from a website called Sedward Five. Um okay. The Warlock. And, and we have a little note here from Big Lou. Says, Big Lou. Um or the Warlock hacker, which we'll get into that. <laughs> Thomas Gabriel's yeah. the guy who shut down Norad with a laptop just to prove a point, and you think I'm scared of you. That is a quote that um Lou has included here. Next, we have the ingredients of this. Firewall Fizz. Genius name, by the way. We're getting a lot of good names this episode. Yeah, that's a good, that's a, that is a good one. I like that. Uh, all right. So now we have two ounces of gin, a juniper-rich variety for a robust flavor. We have a half ounce of dry carousel. Mm. Ha- uh, half ounce of lime juice freshly squeezed. Half ounce of simple syrup. Three ounces of club soda. Half ounce of I'm, I'm, creme de violet. <laughs> creme de violet. Creme de, yeah, creme de violet. Yeah. Use that inner French. Can you give me a French accent when you say it? Mm? Creme de voilette. How's that? Close enough. Uh, and then yeah. in a garbage with a lime wheel and a sprig of rosemary. So here's how we're going to make it. We're going to chill that glass. We're going to place a highball glass in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Shake the base in a shaker. Mix the gin, dry, the, uh, dry carousel, lime juice, and simple syrup. Add ice and shake well for about 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. We're going to layer with elegance. <laughs> Strain the mixture into a, a chilled glass. Filled with ice, carefully float the best, please, if you will. Uh, creme de violet. Thank you. Over the back mm-hmm. of a spoon to create a beautiful layer. <laughs> We're now going to fizz it up. Gently top the drink with club soda, adding a refreshing fizz. We're going to garnish for aroma and appeal. Not a peel, but like for appeal. Garnish with mm-hmm. a lime wheel and a rosemary sprig for a fresh ar- aromatic touch. Nice. <laughs> Serve with flair. Present the cocktail promptly, letting your guests marvel at the intricate layers and enjoy oh the sophisticated God. blend of flavors. Oh my God. This is too God. sophisticated for what happens in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I like it. First off, the drink is gorgeous to look at. It's a beautiful drink. I love the, the ombre of the purple. The ombre? Um, into the, yeah. It's a term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... I it's gorgeous to look at, but I don't think I'm a big gin fan. Like every time I have gin, I don't like it. Yeah. So I don't know what creme de violet is. It looks like it's purple cream. Is what I that like transform that. transfer transfers trans translates translates. Thank you. I know words are hard, ombre. <laughs> oh my god! Please never say that again. <laughs> Uh, it literally means um, do know cream of violet. It is French. It is a French liqueur. Um, but yes, it is violet cream, I believe. So I'm I'm gonna throw it out there and give it a um 2.5 out of five. The name and how it looks, perfect. Uh, however, dry carousel, dry liquids, don't vibe with it. Uh, I hate them. Don't I hate get them so much. started on the dry. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, club soda. I don't like club soda, and it's three yeah, ounces of club either. soda. And that's me. If you replace the club soda with Sprite, yeah, might have me with some. Oh my god, you're such a child. <laughs> you're a child. I need something that's not club. Soda. I don't need flavorless soda. That doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> I don't need battery acid. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, you're, same with you. Like uh, gin, I never really had a gin that I liked. Um, yeah. So I don't know how I'd feel about juniper rich gin. They did an excellent job on the photo. If though for those who are uh, in our Discord, you will see you can see the photo in our drinks channel. But it's beautiful. 
Like it's a really nice, like some of the photos and some of our other drinks, I'm like, Ooh. And I feel like a lot of the appeal comes from looking at it and being like, Ooh, that looks good. But then when I know what's in it, I'm like, Ooh, you know, (laughs) it's like a woman. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh, I cannot believe you just said that. Get him. Get him, ladies. She looks, she looks, she looks pretty, but then when you get to know that mm. personality, it turns then out, you she's, find a out she's an influencer. <laughs> Worse, she's a gym influencer. <laughs> oh, those are the worst. Oh, man. We should probably cut Anyways, that out. <laughs> no, we should keep it in. Oh, God. I, I think it's I think it's tasteful. Tasteful? <laughs> yeah. And not like this drink, though. Not like this drink. <laughs> not like this drink. I am going to give it like an old two. Just because it's just because it's pretty, and I would like probably take a sip of it, and then I'd be like, Ugh, "Nope, you can have it." <laughs> what about you? What would you rate it? I gave it two point five. Oh, okay. I must have missed that part. I'm sorry. All right. Well, thanks, Lewis. Um, that was a interesting one. Interesting one. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. I would say uh, 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 definitely not the worst. <laughs> definitely not the best. All right. You definitely get worse. You definitely could get worse. Let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's episode, which is Shaker and Spoon. It is a monthly subscription service that gives you bar quality recipes and ingredients designed by award-winning mixologists. Now their latest box, Rise Up. Skywalker? Sorry. Uh, oh God. Features incredible rye whiskey cocktail recipes. So if you'd like your very own box, drink along with us and you can head on over to shakerandspoon.com and use our promo code SIPS10 to get $10 off your first subscription. Again, that's promo code SIPS10, S-I-P-S-10, to get whole $10 off. Is there not a drink called the Raya Skywalker? Because I swear, if they didn't make it, they better make it right now. Let's see. The Raya Skywalker. Now, that one they can pay me for. That's not public domain. They can give me that money. <laughs> drink. Oh, <gasps> Isaiah, you need to fucking patent it. I don't think that's a thing. Raya Skywalker. Uh, I can't find. I literally just typed in "Rise of Skywalker" and it died. The Kylo Ride. That's what we were looking at. Mm. The Mm. Rise of Skywalker. You fucking serious? That's amazing. Copyright, copyrighted, and patented IP right now. Right now, get that shit right now. Anyway, ask me a question. Oh, do I have a question for you? I'm actually excited for this one. I think it's gonna be fun. Okay, so it's a game, kinda. Kind of like okay. the president's one, kind of similar, okay. not really, but kind of. <laughs> Getting <me> PTSD. So, <laughs> I don't remember which episode we talked about this, but I know in one of the previous episodes, we talked about how live free or die is New Hampshire state motto. Uh-huh. Which oh, the film. No, no, I'm not going listen, after people's state mottos. <laughs> listen, the I film was Florida. partly. I need no, Florida, the, the sunshine shade. There you go. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> the film was partly filmed in, by the way, in New Hampshire. Really? Which I wonder if that's why they named it Live Free or Die Hard. We'll get to that. Anyways, I'm going to list three wacky state mottos. Okay. And I want you to get which state it belongs to. No Googling, obviously. Okay. Okay. I'm scared. (laughs) All right. We're going to start with number one, which is Eureka. Okay. With an exclamation point. Eureka. Isn't that like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. Are you going to guess? I'm guessing if it's... Oh, I thought you were giving me options. No, you just guess the state. Oh, I'm guessing the state? Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to do any of that. <laughs> I'm going to go with, like, Washington. Okay, you're or wrong. Like Wyoming. You were incorrect. It is California. California? What the hell's wrong with you guys? <laughs> I know. Eureka also, by the way, translates to I have found it, in case you were wondering. Is it... Translates from what? Latin? I don't know. A lot of the state mottos were in Latin, so I had to translate some of them, but this one had a translation, but it didn't tell me, like, what Eureka came from. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, number two. You might be able to get this one if you think hard enough. Okay, I'll give you that. That's your hint. What? Excelsior. Okay. Excelsior. If I think hard enough about all 50 states that could possibly have the motto yeah. Excelsior. Well, what state would make their state motto Excelsior? Sounds like a New England state. Am I somewhat close? <laughs> yeah. Sierra. Massachusetts? Virginia. No, no. Massachusetts. Somebody go Massachusetts. Yeah, you sure you want to go with that? It was Virginia, isn't it? <laughs> no. No? Ow. Excelsior. Who says Excelsior? I actually don't know where that's from. Okay, I'll tell you this. Stan Lee says it. Oh. Right, okay, that makes more sense. Does now. that help you now? No, it does not. I, just, I don't know where okay. Stan Lee's from. 
well, a lot of his comic book characters take place in what state? New York. Mm-hmm. You're telling me Excelsior in New York is a, is their state motto is Excelsior? Yeah. That's interesting. And now it also it translates to ever upward in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, ever, ever upward those skyscrapers, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Lastly, this one just doesn't make any sense to me, so I had to include it. Okay. She flies with her own wings. <laughs> is that a translation from Latin or is that just straight up English? No, that's just straight English. <laughs> That's, what they that's chose. the worst part. It makes no sense. You're like, okay, who is she? Why is she flying with her own wings? I, she, fl- I'm sorry. What, say it again. She flies with her own wings. That's got to be like a Midwestern state. Kinda. Not really. Not really. Not like Idaho or something. <laughs> close. You're close in that area. Wyoming. No, the other direction. Oh, uh, Dakota. One of the Dakotas. No other direction. <laughs> okay, I'm going further. Um, God, I don't know my states. Like, I'm not good with geography. Think um, of like it's such a weird statement. Think of the people that would live in this state that would say this shit because they're just like probably high. Oh, Oregon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> she flies with her own wings. I just imagine someone in Oregon like taking a huge, huge puff. I would like, oh my god, joint. she Being flies like, with her own wings. There is tattoos. <sighs> oh, yes. Yes. She flies her own what does this mean? What does this mean? A las valat propias? Propias. There's a lot. There's a lot of Latin state mottos. So I didn't pick a lot of those because they were all like, they're all very similar. It was like, in God we trust or liberty in freedom. Who's in God we trust? Because I know. That's oh, us. Oh, no. What? Us? You mean the U.S.? That's, no. And God we trust is Florida's state motto. Oh, you're right. So the Sunshine State. God damn I it. Just, <laughs> you're like, I would know Florida. No, I don't. The state is Certainly terrible. Not. Anyway, um, there is another um, state that said something like that. Mm. There's another. I forgot what it was, but there's a state that is like, oh, um, they put in God we trust or something like that. And then a bunch of people sued them saying you can't have the separation of religion and state. And then they lost because they were like, well, it doesn't say which religion. So it's in Oof. God. Therefore, it's well, not, got a, not a, not a, a bad, not a bad point there. Yeah. Not a bad point. However, religion, it's, I guess the, the, the argument was that it didn't mention a specific God. Therefore it can't be a specific religion. Therefore it can't be religious. Interesting. That sounds like something Oregon would do. This <laughs> is Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for, and I guess partaking. that I'm a moron and I did not, that I'm, dude, I I've didn't know a single one either. Knowledge. Yeah. You know what's funny is that last week I was really, really bored and I actually read all the state mottos. Good. And, I, and you I don't didn't re- remember them. I remember them. I just didn't remember what states they were from. And also, oh. again, they were all, most of them were in Latin. So I didn't remember all the Latin. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. There was one, I can't remember what it was. Oh my God. It was hilarious though. Cause it was so stupid. Mm-hmm. It was on, it was probably on par with she flies with her own wings. Like it was just so like, what the hell? <laughs> like star of the North. That was one of them that I saw. It was t- the Texas state motto. Texas was friendship. Okay. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Just friendship. And then Rhode Island's is just hope. Like just the I word hope. It's ironic that Texas's uh, thing would be friendship, given that they keep on trying to secede they kept on trying to secede in the history in the history of Texas. They kept on trying to become their own, their own country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then Tennessee was so boring. It's just agriculture and commerce. Like, bruh. I know. Like, <laughs> dude, come on. I would do like something ominous, like live for don't. your diet. <laughs> no, just like don't try it. <laughs> don't even think about it. That would be my that would be my state motto. <laughs> don't like that. You do it with like a with a little sass. Don't. Don't even think about it. Can you think about like in the future if they change the state motto and they have emojis in it? Oh my god, the eggplant emoji <laughs> for agriculture. <laughs> it's it's eggplant emoji donut. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Damn, that's a good one. That's gonna be California's next one. I'm calling it. Is that what we're gonna? Oh my god, I put the California. We're gonna put the the the, the meme for this episode is gonna be the California flag with the motto below it. This it was just an eggplant emoji. <laughs> Yeah, or just like all of the sexual emojis, you know, the peach, the, wa- the squirt, the the what, the squirt one, whatever the water, like the water dripping. Oh, the like, oh, yeah, 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 the like, the, the like moaning emoji face. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, 
so stupid. Or like the drooling one. God, there's so many. There's the so cursed, many now. The cursed flag of all time. Yeah, our <laughs> anyway. state flag. What's the name of our state? To be honest, I don't even know where we even get state names. Like, where do we, where do these come from? Who came up with the word California? More importantly, who came up with the word Mississippi? All I can think of is that. Oh my god, that vine of um, Ar- uh, Arkansas versus Kansas. <laughs> Why is this not Arkansas? <laughs> America, explain, <laughs> explain. What do you mean it's America Arkansas? Explains. Anyways, I think we should name our state. Juicy. Like, no, I'm thinking like because you know if we're gonna go with the like sexual emojis it's got to be like new hampshire but like new hornish no that fucking work <laughs> jesus christ hornsville dickinson's california oh come on that's good <laughs> california <laughs> that's so stupid uh, oh i hate myself so and much there's sometimes. the episode title california <laughs> yeah right the state that's... of california we're down bad that's the motto. We're down bad. Yes. <laughs> We're down bad. I'm a series of emojis. <laughs> Our state may be good, but we're down bad. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so good. Anyways. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I don't know what's better, that or Shrek Forever Harder. <laughs> <laughs> so names are we're, there's no gradual we're, get, we're gradually getting more sexual that's how we get that's how we get the views <sighs> anyways uh so so what do you got for facts <laughs> america is horny <laughs> yeah amen brother the facts we got today i have quite a few i was surprised i found this many okay but all right D- dial in uh strap yourself into your uh f-35 jet i think that's what it was in the movie Mm -hmm. as they did with the original scripts for the previous three films they didn't do them (laughs) they decided to adapt it instead of course so uh fox and bruce willis in 1997 they just picked up a script called tears of the sun Mm. i know you're thinking of a certain movie Mm -hmm. Hold, hold 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 for a minute hold for sound hold for sound the script was originally about a group of people who get set up at a, ra- a radio relay station deep inside the Amazon jungle. And then due to a severe storm, they land in a small mining town where they hire a guide. However, they're soon captured by a drug lord and his gang who force them to work as slaves in his mine. They manage to escape and have to survive both the jungle and the drug leaders who are chasing them. And they were going to rework it into a diehard movie. Oh, my God. I don't know how. I would love to see that script as a Die Hard yeah. movie because what the hell? <laughs> yeah. You're probably thinking, isn't there a Bruce Willis movie called Tears of the Sun? And there is. Willis liked the, mo- the, liked the title so much that he requested that one of his films made in 2002 be retitled as Tears of the Sun instead of the original titles of being Hostile Rescue or Man of War, which are so generic. Tears of the Sun definitely wins. Oh, yeah. In exchange for starring in another Die Hard film, he said, give me the rights to the, to the title and make the movie that title, and I will do another Die Hard film. And they're like, okay, bet. So this is why it is awfully mistaken that that movie, Tears of the Sun, starring Bruce Willis, was originally going to be the Die Hard film. The film's plot is based on an earlier script entitled World War com by David Macaroni. Dot com? World War, www3.com by David okay. Macaroni. Okay. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. <laughs> yeah. That is based using John Carlin's Wired magazine article entitled A Farewell to Arms. So an article written about uh, cyber attacks and stuff like that called A Farewell to Arms was then adapted into a a screenplay entitled WorldWar3.com, which was Mm -hmm. then canned. They didn't do it because they were going to make the World War, the WW3.com, they were going to make that into a movie. That was its own script. However, Mm -hmm. after 9-11, because this happened before, like in 1998, Mm. The project was stalled, and it was then later resurrected as a Die Hard film when they realized when Bruce Willis and Fox were looking through scripts and being like, "Oh, what can we turn into a Die Hard movie?" Mm. And they found that script and said, "That one's gonna do." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Willis said in 2005 that the film would be called Die Hard 4.0, which I'm gonna be honest, kind of goes hard. Awful. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't like that at all. I think it's I think it's dumb, <laughs> but I think it's like fun dumb. Yeah, I mean it's like, better than. Uh, live free and die hard or whatever. Okay. IGN later reported the film was going to be called Die Hard Reset instead, which that's stupider. That's awful. Yeah, no, that's the Die Hard Reset is sounds really weird. It sounds like a video game. 
Yeah. Ironically, there's a video game based off this movie too. Yeah, I found that out today actually when I was doing research. I really don't know why. <laughs> I don't either. We don't talk about it though. Uh, no. Instead, 20th Century Fox later announced that the title was Live Free or Die Hard. The title is in fact based off the New Hampshire motto of Live Free or Die. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which everybody saw coming. Um, however, I was right. International trailers actually still use the Die Hard 4.0 title as the film is released outside of North America with the, with that title. Uh, and in yeah. early into the film's DVD commentary, both uh, Len Wiseman and uh, the producer and Bruce Willis note that they actually prefer the Die Hard 4.0 t- title. Really, that's surprising. Yes. There's a lot of there's a lot of strange decisions that are made. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that. Now, for the visual effects used throughout the film, actor Bruce Willis and director Len Wiseman stated that they wanted to use limited amount of uh, CGI. One of the VFX artists said that Len was insisting because we've got Transformers and other big CG movies coming out, this one has to feel more real. It has to be embedded in some kind of practical reality in order to give it the edge of being a diehard movie. Mm, okay. I would like you to mull over those words I just told you. Yeah, I was like, okay, sure. That's they didn't really stick to that at all, but okay. So this means the scene of Bruce Willis throwing a car into a helicopter is <laughs> real. It is not CGI. <laughs> yeah. Now for our final fact: while filming a fight scene with Maggie Hughes stunt double, Willis mm-hmm. was kicked above his right eye by a stiletto heel. Oh. Willis said that it was no big deal. However, Len Wiseman went to go t- just check up on him, and he realized he could see his bone. Oh, ah. So Willis no, is a true, you. he is a badass, because he just said, oh, I'm fine. And they're like, uh, we can see your skull. God. Yeah, uh, he then received fracture. seven stitches. So, and yeah, but, so he received seven stitches, and it actually can be seen in the movie. There's a scene in the movie where they accidentally didn't cover it up. And it's when McLean brings Farrell to Bowman and they're in like the, all the chaos and um, in the RV thing when all yeah. the, when it starts going down, apparently you can see his stitches above his right eye. Oh, neat. I mean, not neat, bad on them for <laughs> continuity, but I didn't notice it. So I guess that's, yeah. but yeah, those are all my facts for today. Wow, you had more than I was expecting, considering it's, you know, like a newer film. Usually there's not many for the newer ones. Yeah. Well, well, let's, we can dive right into it. Huh? Yeah, let's uh, let's discuss, shall we? OK, before we even get into it, why not explain what happens in this movie, please? So this movie follows John McClane. He's old. <laughs> yeah, he's super old. and. It's about to be July 4th. However, he runs into a hacker who is a part of a bigger plot of who is hired out to do what's called a fire sale, which basically is to hack into America's infrastructure and then causes basically uh, the collapse of American society. That's kind of the idea. And then him. So McLean and this little hacker dude's got to go and stop that. Basically, yeah. through, to stop America from falling apart. John McLean against the world. Yeah, that's kind of what the, yeah, that's, that's, there you go. That's, that's the yeah. plot. You want to go first? You can go first. I can? Okay. You can go first. All right. Malay. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> don't do that ever again. <laughs> that really threw me off. <laughs> uh, I love when you keep me on my toes. Okay. <laughs> so, I think. Okay, there's a lot. I have a lot of thoughts about this movie. Okay. So to me, it was a whole different look and feel than the previous three, right? This felt very 2000s like action movie. It had the, the color palette and the editing yep, and everything. <laughs> yup. The shaky cam, the fast cuts, and the like blue green color grade. Stereo. Like that's like picture perfect right there. I want you, if you compare, if you. Put a side by side of that in the first Transformers movie, <laughs> or like James Bond from that time zone, like or that Jason time Bourne. too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Obviously, this is co- probably because of the big time jump from '95 from the last film to 2007. So it's like 12 years, and it's also like that's what was 
selling at the time. So yeah, it just felt very generic to me in that yeah. sense. Um, in addition to that, I feel like the story itself felt very like stereotypical FBI agent cyber like attack kind of movie than like a diehard sequel where it's like John McClane versus a bunch of terrorists. Like, yeah, it was still that premise, but it was it was a lot different in a lot of ways. Yeah, I definitely felt the diehard fatigue. Uh, I was not interested in this one at all. It was very hard for me to to keep watching it. I was like, okay, it's the same thing over and over (laughs) again. I'm done with this. You can tell, too, with this movie that John McClane is old. You can just feel it. He's not as witty and like smart ass e in his as he is in his older films. Yeah, he's so they handsome. Kind of they yeah, dropped the they ball kind of on, like, the, on the the one liners. Like he had a couple, but like in the old ones, it was like every other thing he said was just like funny and witty and like sarcastic. And like now he's like old and serious, and <laughs> you know, I was just like. I don't really like you that much now. Okay, kind of like they kind of killed his character. The last like 20 minutes of the movie, I was like, what the fuck is this Fast and Furious? Because yeah. of the, like the <laughs> insanity that was happening with the, what was it? F-35? Is that what you said it was? Oh, so can a jet maneuver through a highway like that? Let's just say that guy would totally gotten fired for everything that he did. <laughs> especially Yeah, for I was like, holy shit. Damage. Um... He is a terrible pilot. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's good because he was like maneuvering and shit, but like he's, yeah. Yeah. Ethics, morals wise, bad. What were you saying? It's an F-35. Yeah, I was right. It's an F-35. F-35. Okay. I loved the Kevin Smith cameo. Almost didn't recognize him as at first when he, he was Warlock. Oh my God, you're right. I didn't realize that was Kevin Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was like. Oh shit. Like I was like, why does he look so familiar? And then I looked up the cast and I was like, what the fuck? This is before the weight loss. He rewrote some of the scenes for the movie. And Oh really? Oh yeah, he did. And I was and I was when I was reading stuff, I was like, there's how? Why? I th- and I realized when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, that he must have been like on set for like another reason, or like he just was visiting and he was <laughs> writing scenes for a different even movie. Know, isn't it? That's I didn't funny. even realize that he, it was him rewriting scenes for the movie he was in. <laughs> That's so good. That's yeah, um, I didn't see. Oh, whoops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were some like aspects of the movie that was like kind of entertaining. Like some of the action sequences were, you know, at least there's big explosives to distract us from the shittiness of the plot. Um, <laughs> I think Justin Long did a great job as, as his character, Matt Farrell or Matt Farrell, Matt Farrell. Uh, Matt, Matt Farrell, uh, I think. Him. Yeah. I think he did a good job as the nerdy, like cyber hacker that's like scared of everything. That's kind of his character. That's kind of like his thing is to kind of just play like the nerdy loser guy. Interesting typecast. <laughs> yeah, I think that I mean, I was waiting for the Yippie ki line and I think it was a good one. I was kind of like, yeah, when he sh- especially when he shot him through his own arm or whatever. I was like, that's kind of badass. I was like, that was cool. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt like a lot. I mean, like as much as the action sequences were entertaining, there were some that were just a little bit ridiculous and just like not realistic at all. Like, yeah, like when he's on the fighter jet and the pilot like ejects and he just like jumps from the pilot, like from the jet and like slides down the highway and like into a little niche where the niche where the jet like it's like so perfect. You know what I mean? It's it's definitely a movie moment. <laughs> yeah, that's a movie for sure. The movie of all time. The movie of all time. <laughs> um, I gave it a two. Definitely one. I'm probably my. I'm not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it. It's my least favorite. I think of them all. Interesting. And I assume you've seen the second one or the next one. Yeah, I saw the next one already. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I know your opinion on the next one, so it'll be interesting. Really. Mm-hmm. Because of uh, Letterboxd. Ah, <laughs> uh, you spoil I always, yourself. I always look at yours uh, after I see the movie because you always watch it before I do. What do you rate it? I'm always pleased when we agree. I'm always like, fuck yeah. But then when I, when I see that you rate it high and I rate it low or vice versa, I'm like, oh, we're in for a wild <laughs> episode. <laughs> two, uh, two stars. Two out of five. What about you? I 
also gave it a two out of five. And it's a lot of yeah. this, for the main reasons you said too. Mm-hmm. The color palette, the I do think the whole the way they portray the hacking is really cringy, but also it's the mid two thousands. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, now, one there's one gripe I did have is uh, why do they need all the hackers to blow themselves up? <laughs> yeah. Like they li- or like for them to type it out and then blow themselves up, they could have literally just you know activated it themselves. So when it didn't mm-hmm. blow up, they had to go in and like shoot up the place, which was also very not inconspicuous. Like I don't understand what the whole point of that idea was. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, one of the, the one thing was I literally and I audibly yelled. What the hell is wrong with you? When Justin mm-hmm. Long got out of the car in the underground freeway? Oh my god, yeah. You know, like, wh- who the hell it is? P- who the hell gets out of a moving car in pitch black when there's cars coming at both directions? Why would you think that's a good idea? <laughs> I like yeah, that's that a whole dumb scene. That whole scene that was, was insane too. I'm like, if I saw like lights going off and I was driving in a tunnel, my lights would immediately have turned on. Like, I would not have waited ten seconds before I was about to crash into someone. To turn yeah, they, were all very, they were all very chill about it. And I was like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, obviously the chaos ensues. I do think the action set pieces are unique. Mm-hmm. I, does that translate to good? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But they're definitely Fine unique. Line. I will give them that because, oh, my God, that is yeah. cr- like the helicopter scene, the the car in the elevator scene. They had a lot of car action, which they did. That's why yeah. it felt very generic was because of all the cars. I was like, I really feel like I'm watching every other early 2000s action movie. You know how the first movie is aggressively 80s? Yes. This one's aggressively mid 2000s and it's not a good thing you want to be aggressive with. <laughs> no, not it's at not all. A vibe. It's not a vibe you want to have. <laughs> no. At least the 80s, it's like you can like accept it. With the 2000s, it's a little cringe. Yeah. So, um, oh my God. Wait, we had this conversation with Rocky. Remember, we're like, what would a 2000s movie be? That's it. Oh my God. That's it. We answered. <laughs> we finally answered our question. <laughs> episodes and episodes later. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's it. That fucking. 2000s action movie with the blue green and it's always like cyber shit it's always like like the matrix is like cyberish and then you got like fucking live free or die hard and then you got <laughs> that's oh my it god that's it oh my god that's crazy i can sleep tonight <laughs> how i do think that the villain this is not the best villain this is Mm-mm. bottom we're getting bottom of the barrel for these villains yeah oh yeah uh, his motivations make sense, though. Like, I get it, but they needed a different actor to portray him. I don't know, because he... That why actor he, is oh, so monotoned. I know. And every single time he spoke, he just looked like he was about to cry. And I was like, bro, <laughs> he's like on the verge of tears the entire movie. And then when he actually does start crying, when, like, one of the characters dies, I was like, oh. Oh, d- oh, so there is another level above that. <laughs> because yeah. the whole movie, he just seemed like he was just on the verge of crying. And the way he spoke was like that. And I was like, okay, this yeah. is weird. I just, and I couldn't take him seriously because the way he like spoke, there was no inflections in it. It was very, yeah, it was very yeah. monotone. So there was no way to take him seriously about anything. See, I couldn't take him seriously because I've seen him, The first thing I've seen him in was The Office. <laughs> so like, I just immediately saw his character and I was like, ah, it's ruined. <laughs> I've, I've never I've never seen The Office, so I didn't like it for different reasons. Yeah. A note, a portable hard drive to download probably what it is petabytes upon petabytes of info. Yeah. Hel- it was hilarious to me, especially since they pulled out disk drives. I was like, oh my God. And like, especially in the early 2000s, it's like, dude, you couldn't even fathom that amount of space at that it was time. The, the mid 2000s, and they were going to download the entire, like, a world's data information for like mm-hmm. what this is 2007 they said they did it after 9 11 so seven years like seven years worth of um of information of all the financial data of america yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's gonna mm-hmm. be like 30 megabytes don't worry about it <laughs> it'll fit on a floppy disk <laughs> <laughs> oh like, shout out and it was i laughed out loud when they opened the case that was apparently supposed to hold all this information and it was too regular disk drives i was like there's no way you're gonna be there for years downloading all that <laughs> you know do you know the transfer rate on a disk drive that's terrible <laughs> it's like 13 kilobytes a second you're gonna be you're oh literally gonna be there to the end of time <laughs> that's why i took the whole movie 
Oh my god. Yeah, and then um the, the pilot, terrible pilot. What the hell? That man's have so, he the infrastructure that he's gonna pay for. My god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then after all that, they just disappear. Mm-hmm. And then um after all that, like the whole thing of him getting the fact that John McClane so first off our, survives that. But then out of all places for him to pop out of, he just happens to see where the van went that he was chasing the whole time. So yeah. he knows where to go. And like, wow. What talk about next machina? <laughs> um, yeah, right. But yeah, no, it's uh, for all those reasons. It has very. I don't know. I just didn't like it. It was two point. It's a two. It's a it's a two out of five for me because of just how weird it is. However, I would also I would like to note right that this movie has an eighty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's insane. I don't know why. Okay, because like I, I, this has to be ratings from when the movie came out, and everybody was like obviously in the mid two thousand, so it kind of works. And yeah. this is not just the audience score the audience score is actually 86 what the fuck uh, this is a solid like i mean like it's not a terrible action movie i think it's like a subpar action movie so i would yeah. say 56 percent would be the highest i'd give it as a rotten tomato score yeah Fair. specifically 56 <laughs> so so a two so a two. it is a two out of five yeah. for me because um yeah right, i don't know ditto. what was happening yeah ditto well um do you have anything else you want to add before we wrap up today's episode? No, that's, uh, that's uh... all right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for listening to today's episode. Please feel free to send in any movie suggestions you'd like to watch. Uh, you'd like us to watch and review for our listeners episode. We do have one coming up very soon, pretty much after this upcoming episode, because the next episode is the last one of the season. So please go send those in at so sips at gmail.com. And if you don't follow us already, then be sure to follow us on Instagram so you can get any and all updates regarding the show. And we will see you guys next week with our final episode for season 15. Susan. A good day to die hard. What'd I say? You said Susan 15. <laughs> okay. All right. Season 15. Jeez. Season 15. Welcome season... to California. Yeah. We're all down bad here. <laughs> <laughs>